All right. Hello, everyone, and welcome to today's webinar. I'm Chris Longo, the Head of Sales and Marketing for AOPEN. I uh, want to thank you for joining, uh, simplifying your digital workflow with our partner, Ping HD. Uh, so basically here at AOPEN, uh, we've continued to navigate the term, uh, air quotes, my camera's not on, the new normal by uh, visiting with our industry leaders uh, and partners that are um, experiencing the same solutions as everyone else and having the same conversations about what is defined as the new normal. Uh, one of our key partners, Ping HD, uh, continues to evolve and adjust um, to all the market needs. And today we're just gonna see how they went from um, a simple mini board solution to providing a seamless approach to digital workflows in signage, but still managed keeping it uh, an easy solution uh, to utilize in the market. So uh, just on a quick note, I wanna mention that the webinar is being recorded and all the materials will be available following. So um, we will have some time as well at the end of the presentation for Q&A. So please feel free to add any questions at any time into the Q&A section and we'll get to the questions at the end. Uh, we'll also provide some contact information. So if we're not able to get to everything, we'll be able to um, reach out and get your answers uh, taken care of. So now let's go ahead and kick it over to AOPEN's Manager of Technology Solutions, Miles Schofield. Thanks, Chris. Hello, everyone. Thanks for joining me. As Chris mentioned, my name is Miles Schofield and uh, welcome to another AOPEN Partner webinar. Uh, as he mentioned, today we're talking about Paying HD. And specifically, I know we've talked about menu boards in the past, but specifically we're talking about the challenge that a lot of customers face uh, and that word is integration. And all integration means is that the, the program that runs your signage that you load all the apps and videos and all that stuff into, it picks up data uh, and connects data from other sources. Usually it's very simple, like a text feed or a news feed or a weather feed. But when we're talking about getting point of sale data, it's a lot trickier. So uh, Ping, uh, uh, Dave Petrasig, Director of Channel Sales from Ping HD is gonna give you a demo of the software. Uh, he's gonna show you uh, how their customers use, how easy it is to set up, um, what sort of information uh, you need to provide from your customers, or if you're an end customer, what information you need to be aware of uh, that's gonna to get transferred to uh, the menu board and of course he's going to bring up some of their projects what they've been working on uh, and what they've uh, what they've been rolling out who's running these screens what are they showing so uh, he's going to run you through that and then after that as usual I'm going to talk a little bit about um, banking and payment as a whole uh, we've talked about this in a few other webinars from sort of a uh, you know menu board drive-through optimization and all that sort of stuff so I figured I'd take this opportunity just to sort of really give a uh, an over a overview of uh, banking technology. We're not going to get in the weeds and talk about a million things, but I'm going to really talk about how I see uh, what data is going to be available coming from the pause uh, in terms of what you want to track, what you want to get out of the system onto cell phones and menu boards and things like that, because eventually you're going you're, you're to need to connect all these systems, right? And that's sort of the point of this technology. So talk about, uh, of course, our offerings and then modern payment solutions. So to kick us off, uh, let's turn it over to Dave Petrasig uh, with Ping, Ping HD. All right, thanks Miles and thank you AOPEN for having us uh, on the webinar today. So we're gonna talk and focus mainly on POS integration for menu boards, okay? Ping HD, we do video walls, we do wayfinding, we do uh, touch screens, we do corporate communication, but our bread and butter is the menu board, okay? And as Miles mentioned, you know, the key to doing menu boards or one of the keys is to do POS integration, okay? Now, first thing I'm gonna share, share and show is our full list of POS platforms that we've already done the API integration to, okay? So everybody that you see here from Appetize down to Volante Systems or just an XML integration, we can pull that data into our software so that when you change the price of a hot dog, it not only does it change your cash register price, but it changes the price in our software, which hits the proper layout and updates your menu board, okay? Now, if there's a POS that's not listed here that you need us to do an integration to, to help you close a deal, 
just let us know. And as long as we can get access to that API for free, we'll do that API integration for free to help you close that deal, okay? And we'll send that out after the uh, webinar for everyone to take a look at. But the first thing I wanna show is our homepage. Now, when a user logs in, Oh, one second, Dave. Make sure you're sharing correctly. It shows that I'm still sharing. Right My now. fault. Sorry. One second. Sorry. So bring up that uh, integration list. Make sure people have it. And like uh, like Dave said, he'll send that out later. That way, you know exactly uh, if uh, you can see if you're using one of those point of sales. My fault. Thank you, Miles. All right. There we go. You got All it. Right. All right. Sorry. Here we go. Anyway. So here's the full list, okay? This is the entire list of the POS software platforms we have already integrated to, okay? This is on our website, we'll send that out later. But again, if there's something not on this list that you need us to integrate to, we will do that for you, okay? So we'll take care of that later, but here's your homepage. Now, where we set up the POS integration is here under settings. And under settings, we go to the product integration tab. Now you'll also notice that this is where we can do day parting for your breakfast menu, brunch, lunch, late afternoon, dinner, night, midnight, etc. But down here is where you select whatever POS you're tying to. Okay, so if you're doing Clover, okay, which is a very popular POS platform. All we need is the API key and merchant ID number, okay? And once that information is populated here, we hit save and import, that data is imported automatically and it's done every 30 minutes. And it's done at zero, zero and 30. So a common question that I get is, Dave, if I upgrade, update the price of, <clears throat> let's say a hot dog, at 12.05 p.m., I see it instantly, right? The answer is no. You see it at 12 o'clock or 12.30, zero, zero, and 30. And that seems to be acceptable for you know most QSRs, uh, fast casual restaurants. And most people are doing those updates in off-peak hours anyways, okay? Now, once that information is entered here and then import begins, the data ends up going into the product library. Now, there's actually four ways we can get products into the product library, okay? We don't have to tie to the point of sale software to do a menu board, but we can, okay? Now, one of those four ways to do it is if you just hit create new. Now, nobody's gonna hit create new 50 or 100 times, okay? I'm just showing you this to show you all the different fields here that are available product number, name, sort, category, subcategory, day of the week, pricing, descriptions, nutritional information, okay? And if there's a category not listed here that you need, you can create an additional attribute, okay? That's one way of doing it. Another way is if you go to the upload or download products tab. Now, if you check all these boxes because you want all those fields and you check this one to download a blank file as a template, that's all it is. It's a spreadsheet template, okay? When you download that, here's that template. Now, these are all the files or fields, I'm sorry, that I just showed you, right? Now, when I got here three years ago, I used to work at a place that couldn't do menu boards. So I saw this, my head kind of exploded. And I figured, you know, I gotta start practicing to do demos. So I figured I was gonna build an ice cream parlor menu board. So I downloaded that spreadsheet, filled in that information, and then saved this data or saved this file and then uploaded it right in here, okay? Into the upload or download section. And once that's loaded, all your products end up in here, okay? The other way to do it is with a Google Sheets document. So instead of uploading and downloading a spreadsheet, you could do it via a Google Sheets document and just make changes to the Google Sheets document and not have to upload or download, all right? But if we tied to that POS software, that's the fastest and easiest way to go. Once your products are in here, 
you're capable to start designing your layout, okay? Now, you can build as many layouts as you want, and every time you hit Create New, you get to name that layout, and our default is 1920 by 1080, okay? Landscape. If you're doing portrait, just flip those numbers, okay? Well, let me show you the ice cream parlor menu board that I built, okay? Now, if you're a Photoshop user, you might recognize some of the similarities here because our layout designer is kind of mimicked after Photoshop. There are different buttons here to add different zones for different types of content. And for a menu board, let me zoom out here a little bit. The key is to add a product table. This is a product table zone, okay? Product table zone can be put anywhere you want. You can size it however you want, like this, or you can come over here and change the size over here. But once you click in here, you get to start to build the data that you want to see in that zone. Now, for my menu board, all I wanted was name and price. So you can add the rows and cells that you want and then customize the data that you want to see in each cell. So for this one, under the field dropdown, I picked name. For this cell, under the field dropdown, I picked price, okay? And once that's done, and you can set up your font styles however you want, you can build your own font or import your own font. And once that's done, you get to pick the products that you want to appear in that zone. So for this zone, I wanted flavors. Okay, so if I hit add products, maybe I want to add bacon. Okay, if I hit apply, you'll see now that bacon is down here at the bottom. If I want, I can grab that, drag it up here, and put it at the top. Okay, if bacon is no longer available, I can 86 the bacon. But if we're tied to your POS software and bacon is out of stock, it will not appear in that product table zone. Okay, you could also go to the products and, and disable that uh, product so it won't appear there. But if you're tied to the POS software, it just won't appear there. So all I did was put three different zones here, one for flavors, one for drinks, and one for toppings. Okay, now sometimes, you know, you might want to put a playlist in there, like you walk into McDonald's or Burger King and you see rotating images and videos, that's a playlist in a zone on a layout. Now, you can create as many playlists as you want. I'll create a new one here, we'll just call it A Open Demo, okay? And once I click OK, what you see here at the top is your asset library because you've loaded all this content. And all you're doing is dragging and dropping content down into the playlist below, okay? Now, you can load them one at, a time, one at a time, or you can click on one thing and hit Control and grab multiple assets and then drag them all down. That little pause there is our software converting those to videos, okay? You can go to folders and grab things from there. You can search your content like this and say, oops, Go back to assets, Cola, and drag a video down there. Now, as you build your playlist, it tells you you have a total playlist length of one minute, six seconds with six assets. You can move things around to reorder the playlist, okay? And you can change the duration for how long you see each asset. Now, our default is every time you drop an image file into the playlist, the default is to show it for 10 seconds. Now, I can manually change that to, let's say, 43 and hit apply, okay? Or I can just use my cursor and move this around like this, okay? Video files, we read the length of the video file, of course. It doesn't default to 10 seconds. Now, you can take this and put it in a zone on a layout. So if I go back to my layout here and go back to the ice cream parlor menu board, for example, and put that in here, 
and go to add playlist. First thing it's going to do is ask you for the playlist that you want to assign to that zone. So I'll say a open, all right? A open demo. And I can move that anywhere I want, size it however I want. It won't play here on the layout designer, but if I hit preview, put it at 60, there's that playlist, okay? So the layout designer is a lot like using Photoshop. The playlist creator can put any images or videos in a zone anywhere you want on the layout, okay? And we do anywhere, anything from quick service restaurants, fast casual restaurants, or things like stadiums. But here's an example, Emo's Pizza, a rather large network based out of St. Louis. 232 licenses. These are the five most recent players that have checked in and the current content that is running. 77 products, 173 layouts, 45 playlists. Here's Taco John's. Now we do Taco John's behind the counter and through the drive-thru. And at the drive-thru, we do order confirmation, okay? Jack in the box. 67 licenses. We also do a lot of stadiums in the NFL, Major League Baseball, the NHL, and the NBA. Here's the Chicago Bears. So we have over 226 licenses and 226 displays throughout that stadium. NRG Stadium for the Houston Texans and New England Patriots. And we also do, if you took a quick look back at the POS list here, to us, a menu item is a menu item, okay? Here's my disclaimer. Whatever your beliefs are in cannabis, to us, a menu item is a menu item. So dispensaries are very well known for having menu boards. And if you come across a customer doing a dispensary or has a dispensary opportunity, all of their menu boards basically need to be tied to the point of sale software. And we have integrated into nine different cannabis based POS platforms, Kova, FlowHub, GreenBits, GreenLine, Jane, LeafLogix, TechPOS, TH Suite, and Trees. These require a lot of maintenance and they have a tremendous number of menu items. So tying to the point of sale software for a Cannabis dispensary is essential, okay? So whether it's a quick service restaurant or a dispensary, just let us know. And a demo like this can easily be done for with you and your customer to help close that deal, okay? And with that, I will hand it back over to Miles. Thanks, Dave. <clears throat> So as you saw, it's, it's really the crucial part of the business is the ease of how to get that information uh, in there, right? That integration just solves all that. You know, can you imagine if you're a dispensary, you have to create 10,000 items manually, that import feature of all those various different so sources in addition to being able to take that, um, uh, uh, take that data directly from the point of sale is what makes it much, much more of a turnkey solution. And I'll talk a little bit more about uh, how the conversation usually goes and the challenges there near the, the end of my talk. So as I mentioned before, uh, what I was sort of want to talk about today, uh, well, first is, of course, how I open place in this space. And then I want to talk a little bit about how I see payment systems evolving uh, from the way that the point of sale interacts um, with other types of technology, like your cell phone, your car, uh, menu boards, et cetera, et cetera. So it's a little, uh, uh, it's a little higher level, um, but uh, I think it's interesting. Uh, to know about these type of systems because traditionally they aren't sold as regular products. They require a lot, large upfront cost and a lot of configuration, sometimes a huge data transfer, et cetera, et cetera. So, uh, so let's talk about AOpen a, a first. Uh, Ping HD runs on absolutely anything, right? Um, so 
Uh, the main thing, the only thing we got to talk about here is to remind you of the A open value is that our players are designed to run in stadiums and kiosks and uh, menu boards. If they're over a fryer, it doesn't matter. You don't want to put a regular device in there because it's not designed to do that. It's designed to sit on your couch. So the, the regular and, and we have uh, products across the board uh, that can fit with any of your customers. So we don't focus on any one particular OS. Uh, we got Windows 10, Ubuntu, Chrome, uh, you know, Linux, Android. Uh, you can see on the bottom is one of the main products we've been selling this year. It's a wide temp commercial grade product up to 60 degrees C. It's really crucial. We have uh, this in a whole bunch of outdoor kiosks and it allows you to not have such a, 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 a very expensive sort of uh, co uh, cooling or thermal uh, control system. So you can just put the media player in there with your commercial screen. So um, we have a lot of people using those in outdoor menu boards and outdoor um, uh, kiosks as well. So uh, this is just to remind you uh, what, what AOPEN does, pretty straightforward message when it comes to signage. So let's talk about banking in hopefully an exciting way. So the major thing that we've talked about in other webinars uh, around menu boards and how uh, the retail situation evolved in 2020 is of course uh, that every retailer was forced to do some sort of uh, what they call omni-channel. Normally when I think of omni-channel, I think of being able to just purchase in multiple ways uh, while you're in the store, but omni-channel obviously means when you can purchase from any location as well. So uh, it sort of has a little bit of a bigger definition than I usually use. But of course, uh, what most people say mean when they say omni-channel adoption in 2020, it's if you had a restaurant, people need to be need to be able to order online. I mean, they can't order in the store anymore. So that everyone was forced to adapt things where their point of sale now needed to be able to have people order online. Right, so all these sort of integrations had to get done, and people had to spend tons of money to stay in business. Because you, if you, t if you were, a, let's say, a, you know, a sushi shop that only took orders with people standing there, I mean, you you couldn't do business last year. So all these sort of systems sort of expanded. Tons of money was spent on these sort of integrations and online ordering and things like that. So the two two main things, of course, online sales growth that was a no brainer in 2020. And the second thing is web pause. So the main thing you need to know about pause is that there's two types, legacy pause and web pause. And the it's really about, well, legacy is called that because it's sort of the traditional way of doing it where a lot of the security and the data is stored locally. And of course, web pause, you should be familiar with a lot of applications that do that, such as Microsoft Word going from the Exchange server sitting in your office to now you can do uh, your exchange server is now just a cloud server and all your apps and data are stored on the cloud. Same sort of idea with web pause, right? The terminal is the very secure, but all the data and the ordering and that stuff is all in the cloud. And your product list is gonna be in the cloud. So it works more like a CMS, like Ping HD, than a traditional pause where everything is just stored locally. So that's the main, and you can see that it's going up and up and up because web pause uh, is much easier to manage and integrate into your store. Uh, we're talking about integration, not this time of about data transfer. We're talking about if I, you know, have a sushi shop once again, uh, and I'm like, okay, what pause, point of sale do I buy? Web pause is going to be a lot easier to integrate um, and and buy and set up than a traditional point of sale or a leg legacy point of sale, right? But uh, one important thing to note is, of course, uh, if you look at that list uh, of the uh, the companies that PhD has uh, integrated with, of course, it has legacy pause on there too, right? Because in order to support those big brands with those point of sales been around for 30 years, uh, you had to make sure you have those big hitters covered. All right, so let's talk about alternative uh, forms of payment. We like to talk about this one a lot uh, is of course, touchless, right? Um, and what do we mean by touchless is that as point of sale systems upgrade, uh, people are gonna be paying and handling their phone right now. So touchless basically means when you have your phone and uh, the, the point of sale asks for your credit card and instead of punching anything in, you just swing your, you get your phone near it, right? So effectively you're not touching it, you're just getting your, your, uh, your cell phone near it. So obviously this is, was a big part because that lack of interaction, lack of touch was much more sanitary than pressing keys and, and other forms. And uh, you can see that I put this graph on the, on the bottom because the main thing I see this industry going towards is that you know the two, the, the, when people come in a retail environment or a drive-through, they're gonna be looking at two things, digital signage and their cell phones, right? They're gonna be 
looking at products on their cell phone and the digital signage, that's going to be their two primary keys of interaction, right? Uh, because if you're if you're out, you're not near a traditional TV or anything. So you want to get, be giving people advertising on both things that they're going to be looking at. And that's why I think if you're having people look at their cell phones while buying something, then obviously you're going to you're going to push them to buy something and then mobile payments are obviously going to go up 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 and i think the the end uh, game of this particular type of technology is that everything's just on your phone the technology exists already it's just not very uh, achievable because you can't just change one thing like if you were a, a shop and you only allowed contactless payments you would cut your entire uh, um, customer base. That's why it's so ch tough to choose a point of sale because how do you handle cash? How do you handle credit cards? How do you handle NFC or mobile payments? How do you handle, you know, uh, do you want to accept Venmo or PayPal or Bitcoin and blah, blah, blah. And uh, it's sort of like you need to pick which features go with the point of sale that you're trying to use. But eventually, uh, due to uh, probably simplification, absolutely everyone's not going to care around anything except the phone, right? Uh, your phone is going to have your credit cards in it via some sort of payment system like uh, Apple Pay or GPay. Uh, it's going to have your house keys in it. It's going to have your car key in it, right? Your car is going to start because uh, it's going to your your cell phone is just going to act as your your fob. Uh, your fob. And my my apartment in Portland already has this uh, keyless entry thing, so I don't even use an apartment key anymore. I just use uh, my cell phone to get into my apartment these days. So that technology uh, already exists. So. I think those two aspects of being in a retail environment are phone and signage uh, are the two primary interactions. I wanted to bring this up because this is a big uh, uh, conversation is, you know, what is the key technology be behind Apple Pay and GPay and how's that going to affect the market? It's not really going to affect the market, but it's important to understand uh, what tokenization is. So. Uh, normally, when you buy something, you enter your credit card data, right? And then the credit card data gets encrypted, and then it gets de-encrypted on the other side. Standard stuff, right? We all understand encryption. Tokenization is a way to try and keep you from having to enter the information on the, the client side or the user side, like your cell phone or your laptop, right? So uh, because it's less secure, you know, you're entering your, your, you're on your cell phone, you're having to enter your cell phone number, blah, blah, blah. It's less secure because the actual cell phone uh, information is stored locally on your cell phone. That way, if someone steals your cell phone or, and is able to access it or looks over your shoulder or whatever, they're actually seeing uh, your credit card information. Tokenization is basically uh, you, you basically upload your information once and you get a fake number, right? A token is it's called. So the user, credit card number, it goes in a vault. And when any merchant wants to reference your credit card data, they reference the token instead. So it's, a, it's basically a substitute type of security thing. So they can steal your token, but they can't steal your credit card number. So it's basically a replacement where it's to, to protect data on both sides of the transaction, because both sides of the transaction now only see the token, which allows them to reference what's in the vault, but neither side e uh, uh, ever checks that. So it's a way of making the entire process a little bit more secure. Uh, another thing that I like to point out that's very different between the American market and other markets in terms of how you're going to interact with point of sale. Have you ever been out of the country, uh, Australia, Canada, wherever, they use mobile terminals way more, right? Uh, when you finished eating at a restaurant, they just hand you the point of sale and you put your card in there instead of having to manage it through the point of sale. How's that going to affect our industry? Well, when you have all the security and the point of sale uh, on a mobile terminal, you can use a much less secure system for your actual um, inventory tracking and ordering system, right? So one of the most cost prohibitive things is when absolutely everything needs to be 100% secure, right? So does your ordering system really need to be secure? No, your payment system needs to be secure. So why have them together? So a lot of modern pause and web pause systems sort of try and separate and put all the security uh, around the thing that's only uh, getting the card. So that's going to affect uh, the, the web pause and the pause market as well in terms of what data, uh, what data is going where and what systems have what data available. Uh, so the last thing, of course, I want to talk about is how people pay for things. Like I mentioned, uh, you know, practically every large retailer needs to take cash still, which is a pain, right? No one really wants to deal with it. Uh, uh, but 
people are addicted to fees, right? So absolutely every pause, legacy pause, standard pause charges fees. I just have squares here, which you can see the breakdown. It's usually between 2.5 and $3.5. And that's never gone away. I think uh, uh, we were having a few conversations about this uh, in the past week, and it, it's the the way of the cash is just never going to ha happen again, right? Uh, it would take, you know, even uh, even Bitcoin is going to charge you the three percent. You know, Venmo charges uh, you know three percent now, and you you may say, why can't we have a cash equivalent? Why can't I just use my bank money as as cash and pay and not you know, no vendor needs to deal with these fees, but the fees are too good. And the fee, the, the basically uh, everyone wants them. So, so basically if you're a, a vendor, you're always going to have to deal with this from now on. Uh, not much to my father's chagrin. He is always like cash is king, uh, uh, but not anymore. Everything's going to be tracked and there you're, you're always going to get a cut as the, as the bottom line. So when we talk about how all these different systems interact and what of data is going to be available to push to cell phones and digital signage um, and menu boards and advertising boards, I just put them all in these things. So basically, we have two primary types of systems uh, associated with businesses, depending on how large they are, point of sale, of course. ERP um, is another type of system, which is more focused on, obviously, resources. Um, and you can see, like, inventory, uh, it stores more logistics data and things like that. So uh, it can give information to point of sales and interact with menu boards as well, right? And so what type of information is available that the future of menu boards may want to be looking at? Uh, some of these are already, already possible, right? As Dave mentioned, day parting, uh, price optimization, right? If maybe uh, if a customer wants to have their pause dynamically increase the price because you're selling more of it or, you know, make the price lower because uh, the ERP system says it's getting old, so it automatically lowers the price dynamically so that your uh, customers are incentivized to spend more. You can see how powerful a lot of these ideas are and that it, they already happen online, but they need to happen on digital menu boards as well. Of course, inventory updates, Dave said that right off the bat. He said, if your point of sale says you're out, boom, off of the menu, instead of having to go up there and put your, you know, you've been all been in restaurants where they have to let, tape out the tape out the item that's um, out of stock, you know, ad optimization and, and dynamic hero. What I mean by these is this sort of my own concept is that every single people are going to be used to ordering online where everything has a little picture, Amazon pictures, videos, user pictures and videos, you get tons of visual information. But when you're in a restaurant, you get a name or a QSR. When you're in person, there needs to be a way to dynamically deliver uh, great photos and uh, to incentivize to buy. So I could see ERP or point of sales primarily having this thing. You can imagine your retail environment. You're like, hey, what does the you know uh, veal piccata look like? And they hit a button on the point of sale while you're staring at the menu boards, and it brings up a great photo of the dish, so you know exactly what you're looking at, right? What do we do now? We, if, if you're wondering what the veal piccata looks like at a restaurant, you got to go on your phone, you go to Google Maps, you click on the restaurant, and then you scroll through the thousand pictures that's on there to see if someone got the dish that you, you like to see what is there. So you can see how valuable that would be in terms of pushing sales and matching online expectation. Dave mentioned this one too, order status. We've talked uh, in other web webinars as well. How do you manage that whole, now that everyone's doing drive-through pickup, drive-through ordering, but that in-person pickup, you know, we've heard of curbside and in-person. How do you manage those? Do you have a menu board outside, or sorry, an order status screen outside that say, hey, park here. If your name is X, you know, your order will be about, uh, out in two minutes. I was speaking to Dave uh, and Joe earlier, uh, and they were saying, yeah, this is big because no one wants especially last year, 50 people standing around the counter being like, hey, where's my order? Is it ready yet? When it? So you have a screen that says, you know, Miles's order is currently frying and it'll be done in five minutes. So you can see the, the data that you pull out of these is so relevant to the customer experience, right? Uh, so you can see that that's the reason why you're getting all these new types of digital signage applications aside from just flat menu board, flat advertising. We've also hit a whole bunch of uh, back of house um, use cases as well. This is more of a corporate communication. It, it, it gives people information about are there uh, what's currently in stock, what needs to be restocked, what stock you need to check, uh, what's being sold, what needs to be sold, that sort of stuff. So those back of house information screens, uh, I've seen them in a lot of large restaurants already, are, are already present and can help optimize uh, a lot of aspects of running a retail business. So. 
Last thing I wanted to mention, just to clo close up the ideology of what we're trying to get across in this webinar is that those integrations that Dave showed you, uh, you know, there was a lot of boxes, but it's it was very simple where the data was coming from and where is it where is it going, right? So if you don't know, if you really ask what needs to happen for an integration to happen, so if you're working with another CMS and they don't have the integration, right, what usually will happen is this long chain, you, you talk to the end customer and they say, hey, can we do this integration? They got to find the tech guy. And then the tech guy says, oh, I don't have that password of, of, oh, I have to go get that and maybe have another verification meeting. And then you have a technical meeting with the guy who knows the password and knows the, the, the point of sale rev. and and, and then you have to scope it out and maybe the company will charge you and, and, and then the, you'll determine a timeline meeting and then you have to, yeah. So uh, that's why it's very difficult to create a turnkey solution if the company doesn't have the integrations done. But Ping HD is the leader in the space doing these point of sales integrations. And that's why uh, it should be an attractive uh, option to sell uh, because it's very low touch compared to having to do those customizations, right? Um, it, it all goes in there pretty easy. It's very clear. Uh, and you saw Dave's list. I just put uh, the list from their website in here. So if you talk to a customer and they say, hey, we use Clover or Square or, or Flow Hub or any of these things, then you know it's not going to be a long process of back and forth talking to programmers and tech guys, right? All right, let's wrap it up. How are we doing for time? Not too bad. Okay, finish it up. Ping HD, uh, there are over 40,000 screens now. Uh, years of experience, uh, almost 15. And uh, like we said, they're really focused. They can do anything a regular CMS can do. You wanna run videos or blah, 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 doesn't matter. Of course they can do that. But the, the real important thing is that if you run into that key integration thing and you want it done uh, in a very turnkey like manner, uh, they've done all that stuff. And uh, they have a lot of experience with po point of sale and the order data and now the order status data as, a, as I just mentioned that they're working in. And it's all about trying to elevate that customer experience to what's going on in online retailers, right? Uh, second thing uh, to mention is, yes, like a lot of other people who spoke focus on retail, they have a team of full-time artists too and programmers uh, on staff at Ping HD. So they got, that, they got that covered if they need to do a quick redesign. So they have those people there too. They of course have programmers uh, to do the integration. As he mentioned, they're really focused on a particular market right now that really, really needs this integration because no one wants to, uh, sit around doing 10,000 entries of uh, weed products. Um, and so they're able to support, you know, small business all the way up to full stadiums, as you saw. I mean, those are not, those are some of the largest stadiums in the United States, right? And of course, uh, with AOPEN, uh, Ping HD runs on absolutely any player. Uh, and AOPEN, the main reason why you choose it is because it's it's the least, it, number one is designed uh, and no one wants their, their screens offline, especially if they're menu boards. If your menu boards go down, you can't buy anything. So you really need reliable players. And you know ours are sub 1% uh, and designed to run for five years, even if you stack them in kiosks, right? We got those special units that you can put in kiosks or uh, semi-outdoors and things like that. So, uh, so that about wraps it up. I hope you uh, learned a little bit about, of course, you got a good view into how Ping HD works. And, uh, Hope you learned a little bit about how the uh, point of sale technology fits in and all the data sources with running a retail business. So uh, I'm going to hand it back over to Chris right now while we take some questions. All right, thanks, Miles. And uh, I'll just cover a couple more key uh, points here. Please also remember to use that key uh, Q&A section if you have any questions, and we'll be sure to jump on those. Um, and then we can answer them right here in the call from the A open side. And the ping hd side um the other the other couple things we wanted to mention is not only does a open operate on a um not only does it operate on different platforms but we also operate everything from all-in-ones to two-in-ones um and have several key components to plug in to make a full solution um all the way to full um 180 degree cameras um that have trackability um along with as miles mentioned earlier um devices that are specifically built um to be placed outdoors um for high high temp and low temp areas um whether whether it's going to be a solution that's in an outdoor stadium um or even at a, a qsr out that's outdoors or any other component like that so 
we have just about any type of product that supports any um, level or number of screens from low end all the way up to extremely high end. Um, AOPEN is a fully commercial industrial uh, medical grade company. So we pride ourselves in working with products that are particular made to be running um, all day, every day. So we also have um, the, as I mentioned, the all-in-ones um, and from 10 to 15 to 22 inch, uh, 19 inch options. So we do have um, those as well. And then the, the reliability is key. Um, our digital engine line for our, our Windows and Linux devices is less than 2% fail rate. Um, our Chrome line is less than 1%. So um, a lot of our customers choose to stay with us specifically just because it's a set it and forget it type solution. Um, you should have to worry about your updating your menus and updating your um, features of what you're trying to sell as your product, but you shouldn't have to worry about what's the display is or what's behind the display that's powering it. That should always just be um, reliable, dependable, and always there. So you're not creating truck rolls to have to go out and deal with these. Um, so we did have, um, a question that came in here. Um, let's see, uh, looks like Dave answered it in the chat, but Dave, I'll just read it off so everybody can kind of hear the question and then you can kind of answer it back. But, uh, with over 40,000 screens deployed, uh, how many are tied into big data analytics? Yeah, we're probably tied to, I'd say, Probably over 70% of the menu boards that we do or that our software is used for. I mean, we're, we're strategic partners with Aramark, uh, the food and beverage company. So Aramark helps get us into a lot of those stadiums that we've talked about. Uh, we also work with Sodexo, Levy, Delaware North, and Centerplate, other food and beverage companies. But between that and, you know, Appetize, which is another big one in professional stadiums uh, that plus all the other, you know, point of sale softwares that were integrated to already, especially for QSR, fast, casual dispensaries. Uh, I'd say, yeah, we're probably, probably around 70%. All right. And I had another one that came in here through um, the individual chat, a couple here. Uh, one of them is, uh, if I'm new to signage, how far does your level of support go for setting up a new solution? Uh, Dave, you want to answer that one? What's your new uh, new customer experience like? Uh, well, I mean, that that's the great thing. I mean, you know, the great thing is that we're based in the U.S., we're based in Denver. I'm in Chicago. Uh, we have a lot of competitors. I mean, we know, you know, there's a lot of CMS companies out there, but a lot of them are not based in the United States. We have our own software development team based in Denver. We have our own project uh, management team in Denver. We have our own support team in Denver, and we have our own content team in Denver. And our, you know, our, what customers get when they buy our software is unlimited support unlimited storage of content in the cloud, unlimited users, and unlimited training. All free, no hidden fees. All right. Um, it looks like I have one more question here. Just um, this works for both sides, Dave and Miles. Uh, are you able to jump on calls with a customer and or provide demos? Uh, I'll go first if you want, Miles. Uh, yes and yes. I mean, you know, the big majority of my day is spent joining channel partners on demos with potential customers uh, to walk them through the whole start to finish, loading assets, creating playlists, creating layouts, doing touch screens, doing video walls, doing menu boards, POS integration. And yes, if interested after the demo, create a network for them provide a license or two or whatever is needed at no charge. Yeah, from the AOPEN side, uh, the way that we work with our partners and resellers is that if you want a, repre a hardware representative, um, then we're always happy to join uh, meetings. Uh, 
the 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 reason why it's sometimes important to have, especially for the larger deals, the hardware guys show up is because you know if uh, uh, you know people want to make sure that the entire solution has someone uh, represented, and of course. Uh, our product is more specialty than a typical channel product, which you would never get anyone to show up to any meeting ever because they can't waste time. They need to sell. So with our products, though, we can show and represent our product, show you the, the uh, tell your end customer the benefits and how our solution fits with uh, the CMS like PHD and how it fits all together to make the best solution as a team. So uh, it's best for uh, good deals where you want to represent all the different aspects of the solution together. Yeah, and on that note as well, we've had several opportunities that have come in um, through channel partners or end users alone where they just needed another set of eyes for somebody to come in and say, um, you know, our project stalled. Um, we don't really know what we need to do here. We don't know um, which direction we need to go. And sometimes um, just having that extra set come in and be able to say, here's here's a few recommendations. Let's try this. Um, is certainly no problem. We have full resources on both sides of the house um, in order to support that. So regardless of whether um, you're an end user that's putting these in to set up this project and you're looking for um, the key components to get started all the way through the um, development and design pieces, um, regardless of which portion it is, or if you are um, a partner that's putting the solution into an end user and you're not familiar with 100% of every piece, because it, let's be honest, there's a lot of moving parts. Um, we're actually here to organize those moving parts together. So that way you don't have to spend the time and you make sure that it's done right before it's deployed. So it's definitely, um, we're a key resource for that. So please feel free to, to reach out to us. Um, and it looks like that's all I have for questions. Um, so let's go ahead and uh, wrap things up here. So I just want to uh, thank everybody for participating in today's webinar. Uh, once again, I want to thank uh, Dave Petrasik from uh, Ping HD for joining. Um, and just as a reminder, all of this content, the recording, the slides, everything uh, will be sent out um, to everyone um, when we're done. Please feel free to use any of this content to send it out um, to any anybody. If you need um, help or you need to just jump on a call, let us know. Um, but uh, we're definitely here to help and support in any way that we can. Uh, thanks again, everybody, and have a great day.